I need to trim my mustache because it always looks like I, I notice this when I look like my hair comes down over my teeth and so like if I smile or something it looks like sometimes like I just have like <laughs> like this big Fangs. black thing sitting on my teeth and I'm like oh god <laughs> oh, god. oh no it's fine <laughs> it's just my freaking mustache man I hate growing. it when it curls up under your lip and it like starts touching your teeth and you start oh, I bite off the little things and spit them out I don't do that I don't, didn't really get that far for me but um Okay. It gets oh yeah, no, dude! Yeah. It'll curl right up into my mouth, and if that's that's just like yeah, okay, it's time to cut it. Trim their facial hair; they don't they don't I eat know, it off. I know. Um, well, it's 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 a uh, pandemic, man. I don't have to go anywhere, so I don't I don't do the the hygiene stuff. No, I I agree. I was actually thinking about that earlier today. I was like, man, you know, it's gonna be weird going back to the office and you know having to wear deodorant again. It's crazy. Uh, uh, I'm not looking forward to it, to be honest with you. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Pixel Perspective Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Adrian. And I'm your other host, JJ. Hi, JJ. How are you doing, man? Oh, really weird, like, bounce back. I did that. I don't know why I made that facial expression. I apologize to those of you in the cameras. Audio people, you can't hear me, or you can hear me, but you can't see what I did. And it's just a goofy face. And now I'm just going off another tangent. It's like 30 seconds into the show, and I'm already doing this crap. All right, we'll just go ahead and stop right there. I'm doing great. How are you, Adrian? It's good to hear you and see you and all that fun stuff. Yay, ready to talk some Xbox. Are you done? I'm done. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Man. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm excited too, man. This is what it's but like inside also, my head all the time, by the way. Is it? That's just how is it, it is. Yes. I kind of got that impression from you just by watching your, your, <laughs> your videos. Like, yeah, you'll be started this video talking distracted. about trophies, but all of a sudden he's talking about like war in Syria. This is weird. <laughs> I don't understand. That. Actually, I'm having I have a new setup today, so I can't decide where I want to look. So if you're watching me, and sometimes I'm looking at the camera, and sometimes I'm looking down here. I think I've look. I've rearranged my windows, so now I'm more in line with the camera. Is that better? Look directly at the camera. I, you look good. Yeah, I always look either at myself or at you. And I, if I remember to, then I'll look at the camera. Hi guys, how you doing? <laughs> and then I'll go right back to, yeah, by the way. Because I'm having a conversation with you, talking to you. So I'm looking at your face. If I look at the camera, it's just, I do when I record my videos, but obviously I do that downstairs, not up here. Speaking of videos, dude, mm -hmm. actually, before I ask you that question, we're talking mm -hmm. Xbox Series X today. Yeah. So stick around for that. But before we get into that, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to chit chat a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Your your cyberpunk video came out yesterday. I just watched oh it this God. morning. I loved it. It was awesome. You had me totally stoked to play cyberpunk again, or at least give it another shot. Uh, your enthusiasm for the game was pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, my, my enthusiasm infectious. for the potential. Yes, yes. I mean, <laughs> it, it it was exactly what I was wanting from cyberpunk, and it really really made me yeah. want to go back and dive back in on that so <clears throat> good, so, good job on that thanks uh i have to say um i don't know if you saw my tweets saying like where i was um those of you who follow me on twitter i guess i should say you may have seen uh, like a tweet or two of me saying like hey uh been recording all day and here, i'm editing right now and blah blah all this stuff like kind of giving like little, little tiny updates I literally spent the entire weekend working on it. I started, I had not written it at that point. Only the only thing I had written was the intro. That was it. So Saturday I wrote the entire review. I recorded all the audio for it. I filmed what I needed to film and I transferred my um, recorded footage from my PS five over to my uh, computer. So I was like really proud of myself. I was like, man, it took all day, but now I got all the, the bulk of it done. This is great. I, I can just, you know, walk right into editing tomorrow and I can just knock it out because I've got everything I need and I can just slap it on there and I'll be done, in, you know, a couple hours. Not the case. <laughs> um, <laughs> I second review in a row where I run into editing problems with regards to uh, the uh, recorded footage for the game. 
Um, so I have not done this before where I take the footage from my PS5 and put it onto my computer. Uh, for one, when I moved the footage from the PS5 to a USB to transfer it to my computer, I, I don't know, it, I'm assuming it's just a PS5 thing um, because it's, and it's still new and they're, you know, ironing out bugs and whatnot. But some of the files wouldn't fully transfer over. Uh, it would get like, it, I, what I wanted to do was just set all of them to transfer and then go for it and be done and you mm-hmm. know, let it run its thing in the afternoon or whatever. It kept freezing up, wouldn't do it. So I went one by one. As I went one by one, some of them would work and then others would crash and not transfer. So I had to, I looked online, other people were having the same issue. I literally had to go in because you can edit videos on there, at least like, you know, slim them down and stuff. Took yeah. a couple of seconds off the front and back and then they went through fine. So I got all that stuff, put it onto my heart, my USB, transferred it over to my computer, no problem. However, <clears throat> then I had to, because they don't come out as the correct file type to be able to use for Shotcut, the uh, the editing software that I use, um, I had to change the format. Um, and I so I changed them all to MP4. Uh, and then I tried putting one of them into Shotcut and it was audio only. And I was like, what, what the hell? So I was like, well, this sucks. So I went back, changed it again to another version of MP4 and a shotcut has something in there where this version, this type of MP4 doesn't allow you to actually edit the the video, put it, drag it and drop it into your time slots. Mm -hmm. Um, So I had to change the format again. Every time I did this, it took like three to four hours total. I had to change formats three times on these things. Um, and it was, I, I was getting so frustrated. I was at one point I was like, I'm going to have to freaking, you know, use trailer footage again and then go for it. Eventually I did get it to work. I'm still not 100% happy with everything because there was a whole clip that I wanted to put in there that I, I couldn't because it still hadn't finished transferring or uh, uh, converting to the right format. Um, right. And cause it was a whole nother aspect of the game that I wanted to show off. There's a, an underwater scene that you can do where you're literally swimming underwater and exploring this city that had been flooded when a dam burst, like, and you're oh, wow. swimming through the city underwater. And I wanted to show a little bit of that. Um, but I, I was just like, I'm not even going to mess with it. Cause this is just taking way too long. Um, so I left that out. Um, and I was so frustrated and so angry. So when I finally did get it up, I don't know if you saw when it went up, but normally I'd I try to release my videos around noon on Sundays. This got up like 8 8 30 p.m yesterday so i was i was just so done and so frustrated um but i, did I saw your frustration on <laughs> yeah i saw some of your frustration on uh twitter uh i man so so what's the solution do you just use an external copy or a capture card instead of using the playstation one um no i i think it's fine i i can do it now now that i know which format to use specifically So it was Um, all just a format issue then? Correct. Yeah, you just had to convert it into the right format. And so now that I I know which one it is and how to do it, um, it's it's better. But at the same time, I'm just like, I'm just exhausted from having to do it in the first place. So yeah, I can imagine, man. That's the thing about doing videos is like, it's never as smooth as you think it should be or Mm -hmm. think it will be. There's always issues that come up. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just takes a lot of time. And I mean, Look, at, it just took your entire weekend to put that thing up. I will say, though, it came out really well, just as good as any of your other reviews. And I, oh, I, uh, the, uh, like I said, it makes me want to go back in and give it another shot. So I think it's yeah. successful. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to go see my review of uh, Cyberpunk 2077 Game Room Revival on, uh, on YouTube, go check it out. It's, it's also, now. it's one of the more positive reviews I've seen on the game because you're not like, completely stuck on the on the downfalls the uh the bugs yeah and a lot of that honestly came down to me not having very many um i was really surprised at the amount that i saw from other people like i said at the end of the video um i have a friend of mine who i played alongside and she played on her ps4 we both played the ps4 version but she played on her ps4 i played on my ps5 and she was like yeah it's it's just really weird there's a lot of a lot of bugs and glitches and i see like people with no heads and like people like you know, sinking into the street or, uh, you know, standing sideways and floating and, and all that weird stuff. And, um, and I'm like, I didn't get 
much of that at all, but the game crashed on me a lot. I had between 20 and 30 crashes in the, you know, 70 to 80 hours that I played. And she's like, really? Because mine didn't crash like at all. <laughs> so it was just, it was really odd uh, to, to, you know, compare notes with her and stuff. And I, I it's really just affecting people in different ways. It's kind of crazy. So um, again, I, I think there's a ton of potential there, um, but definitely wait till you see a price drop and uh, that it's, in better condition than it is now so but i did like it and i'm like it'll already be out by the time this podcast episode comes out but next week i'll be doing my top five games of uh 2020 um and i i'm i'm still on the fence on what my number five is going to be because I, i'm part of me wants to put cyberpunk on there but at the same time like i don't know that i don't know i really just don't know i yeah. have to decide so We'll yeah <clears throat> well i can give you uh since i'm not doing a video over it i can give you kind of my top three i get i can imagine like coming up with five is kind of hard um once i get but, to five that's where i'm like oh god because every other game after this is not going to be on the list at all so it's like yeah that's the tough one to do yeah i see i see well you also mentioned that you were you started kadoka off of mm -hmm. your list how I'm far did you get into that I am using a walkthrough um, because I tried to do it without one and it was a nightmare. Um, I am just about at the end of disc one. Okay. So it's a short so how many, game from what I understand. How many hours is that? Uh, I'm about somewhere between three and four hours in, something like that. Okay. So I actually am, am enjoying it quite a bit. I don't like the weapon degradation. I hate that in games. That is yeah. one of my least favorite features in any game. Uh, but thankfully <laughs> this one is like going unarmed um, is a viable option. And so I have one character using unarmed and raising his skills that way. And then the other two use magic. So um, I haven't really needed to worry about it much, which is nice. So I, having heard that you were getting started on it, you texted me, I went ahead and got started on it too. Cool. Um, I am, I don't know, maybe an hour into it. Uh, not that far. Uh, I really like what I've played so far. It's very reminiscent of uh, Resident, Resident Evil. Evil. Yeah, yeah. I got the same vibes from, uh, and I haven't even played much of Resident Evil, but like I, <laughs> I was like, just from what people have described, like just going through an old creepy house and picking up yep. items and looking for how to open different doors and which pathways to go down and stuff. And I, I was like, this is kind of what I expect Resident Evil will be like. Obviously, without turn-based combat, but. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm digging it though. I'm really, really liking it so far. There's some, there's some things that are kind of throwing me off though. Like you expect it to be tank controls, but it's not. Mm -mm. And that threw me off a little bit. <laughs> I had to look up online to figure out how to save my damn game because it doesn't tell you how to save. Yeah. It's, it gives uh, you there. There's, it's weird how they do it. They have temporary save files and then they also have permanent save files, which is odd. Uh -huh. So yeah. I don't know. I didn't even save it until I got to the first permanent save file because I didn't know what those other ones were. I had no idea. So, okay. So there's actually like a save point, save yes. permanent save file. Okay. Yes. All right. Because all I've been encountering now is the, when you get into a new room, it has the S symbol next to the name. Yeah. And it stops showing up after like the first couple of times you go in there. Oh, um, really? Oh, yeah. that's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you'll get to like, you'll find fountains because they'll restore your hit points and magic points and you'll get uh -huh. to save there. Um, you'll, you'll okay. get there eventually. First one comes after you fight. Uh, the, it looks like, like some stained glass. No, no, no. That's the second one. Uh, it's like a, like a, what are those called? Arboretums with like plants and stuff. And everything yeah. inside a greenhouse. Yeah. Um, I just beat that, that boss. It was really easy. The plant. It was like a, the plant. Yeah. And you got the third character. No, I only got two characters. Because you get the I third character right after you beat the plant. I, well, nothing happened. I beat him and then nothing happened. So I left the room and I don't really know what's going on. Did, you got to go back and talk to that guy. He's like on the ground. He's like, oh, dang, my leg. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. Because I got lost <laughs> on there. So when I first entered the room, he was laying yeah, down on the ground. Right. Then you just go okay. talk to him again after you beat the guy. And then uh, the save point's right there. 
because he's a priest and he's like oh this fountain used to have holy water let me see what i can do and oh man i totally missed that okay i figured i just talked to him once and then that was it Might the well. banter between the three characters is actually really good i think I dude really the voice that, acting so. in the game in general is surprisingly good i i compared to other ps1 games yeah yes it, yes yeah. it's also very uh it's weird kudelka she's the lead character in the game yep. she is uh she's not very nice nice lady no no she's not at all no i like her though i don't know i'm having, I'm having fun with it i was i was expecting this to kind of be one of the throw-off games like because i really want to get into the shadow heart series and i was like yeah. well, i should play kudelka first because it's kind of the, the appetizer to those um and then i started playing it and i was like i'm actually really enjoying this this is cool okay yeah same here same here i also find it weird with the inconsistencies of like the the very beginning when kudelka heals your that that one guy forget his name um and that was also a very weird scene too i'm talking about that very very beginning of the game before you edward. Can take control of you. edward <laughs> she goes here let me take care of something for you and she then gets down on her knees right next to him and Where'd proceeds to go? heal him Where yeah 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 go? dude wow. they were setting it up they were yeah. setting it up <laughs> I, wow. I laughed out loud at that part i thought it was hilarious uh but she heals him and then he's like shocked that she used magic to heal him. And then right after that, we go into the next room and we fight some just random encounters and we're fighting like chairs and tables and stuff. It's like, dude, yeah. you're fighting all these weird creatures and you're blown away about her magic capabilities. Not to mention he's able to use magic too. <laughs> That's true. He can. So. <laughs> yeah, it's inconsistent. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's weird. That, that uh. game also doesn't have a map and it could really benefit from having a map. At least I haven't seen one yet. You can pick one up. Okay, I missed it then. Unless, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was in one of the first rooms. Ah, okay, yeah. That's what Dude, I'm saying. I, I'm, it, I'm, a guide. <laughs> it would be fun to talk more about it because I've got a lot to say, like in terms of what I've experienced just in the short period of time that I've been playing it. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. It's making me want to push through to the end and, and like you said, go on to the Shadow Heart series because I'm impressed. For a PS1 have... game, it's impressive. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Uh, we got to start Dark Souls 2, 2 sometime soon too, though. True that. True that. Yeah. Um, I'm always I'm always ready. I will stop whatever I'm playing to go into that. Guaranteed. We we've actually played uh, a few things um, together the past few days. Uh, past we few have. Days, yeah. Say. Um, we did the and this is pretty much like what I've been playing is I finished Trails in the Sky, uh, which really really enjoyed that game. Um, yeah. Can't wait to get to the second one. Um, I also finished up um what is that stupid game called i'm playing through kudelka right now why can i not think of the other one i beat oh my god oh my god i can't think of it the other one the other one that i did you know you know the one i'm talking about i would you know? if you tell me i forgot the wolf among us Jeez. oh that's right that's right yeah um and i was n- it was not anywhere near what I was expecting. Um, I thought it was going to be about like a werewolf in a city and people, the townspeople are going to try and figure out who the wolf was. And it was just going to be this mystery. Not even remotely like that. It's like includes fairy tales and fables and like mystical creatures and characters like Snow White and Cinderella. And like, I, I'm, and it's like a, like a murder mystery. Like it's, yep. it's really weird, but it's, I was not sold after the first chapter. I was like, this is kind of odd. I don't, I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy this going through it. I'll still finish it because it's short. But once I got to the end and I finished it, I actually really liked it. So it's not, it's still not The Walking Dead. Um, and I actually like Game of Thrones better too. Um, but I, I still did enjoy it. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, cool. And then, yeah, like I said, working on Kudelka now. But uh, we together played... Um, We'll talk about Forza, I'm sure, when we get into Xbox stuff. But uh, the Monster Hunter demo, which was oh yeah, um, I am Monster I'm, Hunter. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get it. I'll pick it up. Um, yeah. So if anybody else is picking up that that Monster Hunter for uh, for the Switch that's coming out, I I would love to have. I don't know. Are you picking it up? Yes, I will. Okay, because I'm sure just we would love to have nothing more else to play with. 
<laughs> yeah, if for nothing else than to have uh, a co-op game to play. Yeah. Um, I I enjoyed it. We we got our butts kicked on the on the intermediate one. That was rough. We got absolutely destroyed, yeah. and we tried like three or four times. Uh, the uh, beginner one was was a joke though. We were able to take that down, no problem. Um, even with the, even with uh, Katie's help, we couldn't beat it. Right. Right. Uh, the the demo doesn't allow you to like upgrade anything though, so you're all you're using your basic stuff the entire time. And like you were saying, normally we'd be able to upgrade stuff and work towards getting better equipment before we went towards you know the stronger guys, um, right? And so, but it was cool to be able to test out all the different weapons and and that kind of thing. So, um, did you decide what you're what you think you're gonna go with? Oh yeah, the bow for sure. You going with the bow? Yeah. yeah, I tried. I don't know five different weapons, and the bow is by far the the one i had the most fun with i'm i'm kind of leaning towards the the twin blades i really like those Ooh, fun. just like katie that's what katie said yeah. too i really really thought those were cool um <laughs> speaking of there's katie right there <laughs> recording a podcast yeah <laughs> come here kate come here hi oh hi there's katie hi she played <laughs> uh she played monster we, hunter with us we hunted monsters together yep <laughs> yes what are you going to main on monster hunter if you play it with us the two blades told you twin blades yep jj agrees by the way if you get that game get it so it's in the disc because i want to play it in the discs the, i mean like the little cartridge cartridge oh you want, want that game yeah I want to play all right it. all right we'll do it yeah. if you get your chores done <laughs> pulling the dad card that's right that yeah um <clears throat> yeah we played that we also played uh splatoon too Splatoon, yeah yeah that was fun like really it was fun. surprisingly it was a fun time yeah. um and because yeah i'm not normally a, a splatoon guy but like i went from like level like five to like nine just by playing with you guys um yeah <laughs> which is you know still super low comparatively but like i i had not even played that much since launch so we did the uh the splat fest the mushrooms versus the stars Mario yep. Splatfest. Our team won mushrooms. No big deal. That's right. All right. And uh, I've been having a good time convincing Katie that it's because all the uh, adults chose mushroom. And yeah. adults are just better than the kids at Splatoon of 2. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. That's just the way it is. <laughs> that was pretty funny. They were like, we were, I was like, so which team are we going? You're like, well, all of our kids went star. We went mushroom. I was like, oh, cool. And this is after you told me your kids are amazing at this game. Great. So, yeah yeah <laughs> but we, i yeah it was uh me you and uh and amy and we we had a good time with yeah. it I, I really liked it how long do we play for like two hours oh i say longer than that I, really it was I'd a long time at least like three or so <clears throat> three or four i for I one like all night never would have thought i would have played that game for as long as we played it but mm -mm. i was just i was getting in the groove i was having a good time you know, I was finally figuring out like how to play the game. I've never yeah. really understood how to play the game and how to use your character and the weapons and stuff. Uh, I think I, was I think I'm gonna see about like following, um, like because I, I honestly like once we got done, I honestly didn't have like a super big drive to go back to it again. Um, right. Especially once the splat fest was over, I was kind of like, oh, okay. Um, but I think I'm gonna like see if like I can find a like an account or something on Twitter to follow that'll announce when the splat fests are coming um, i'll tell you because i think okay yeah because i think that 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 would be the time to jump in and i always i think that'd be fun to do the only thing that sucks is stupid nintendo voice chat man what the heck yeah oh my gosh that's ridiculous have to use your phones and put it on speaker to try to Literally, hear each other yeah. talk I'm just sitting there yeah. with my phone next to me on my couch hoping my cat doesn't sit on it while i'm trying to play so it's yeah like, uh, well, not only that, but you're only limited to Mario Kart and Splatoon 2 on the app. So you have to find some other way to, to, talk, to voice chat. I think we need to do something like Discord or something in the future and just set up a room. That way I can put on headphones or something. <clears throat> I don't know. I shouldn't have to use my phone. Yeah, same here. Same here. But in terms of like knowing when the Splatfests are, Katie is literally obsessed with that game that is her favorite game she has cool she has all the amiibo okay. for it she has all the books the manga for it she oh talks gosh. about it constantly she's like so deeply into splatoon it's crazy well make sure we're all on the same team next time and then we can all play together <laughs> and then hopefully you know 
we'll win a little bit. I mean, not that we didn't we didn't play bad. We won a handful of matches. Um, we did really good. We had like a yeah. we had like a six or seven win streak. I want to say it was pretty good. It was good. Yeah, we did we did well. I was happy. <clears throat> good time. Um, yeah, Splatfest is 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 the fun part of that game. Everything else is okay. You know, if you're into it, great. I I like the salmon run, the co-op stuff. Um, I just don't do it very often, but I, I, the Splatfest is easily my favorite part of that game just because yeah. the rivalry is just fun. So yeah. Yeah. Can't wait to see the next one. Um, uh, that's it for me. What about you? What you've been playing other than what we played together? Well, honestly, a mishmash of things like tip, like usual, there has been one game though, that I've been sticking with, uh, and that was, or that is, um, immortals phoenix rising i had to remember the name of it i i probably have 20 hours into that game right now um it's a pretty long game and i'm enjoying it like so much uh you get into it and it's 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 assassin's creed mixed with breath of the wild so assassin's creed in that you are going to different areas and climbing up to the top of something and overlook doing the overlook to unlock different areas on your map. And then you go and explore these areas. And so they've got challenge dungeons, very similar to how uh, breath of the wild does it. They're puzzles. So you get in there and you have to solve the puzzle using the set skill set that you have or the items that you have. Um, it's a Greek mythology game and you play as a character named Phoenix and you are, I think his name is Typhon. Typhon has, now I'm not familiar with Typhon at all. I don't know if that's a character or a person, uh, a real yeah. Greek mythological thing. <clears throat> but anyway, he's trying to control the world and he's turned all the gods into different weird creatures, you know? And so like, like uh, Ares, he turned Ares into a chicken. So you go find Ares and then Ares is in control of one region of the world. And then you have to talk to him and do all kinds of missions with him and then free him from his chicken state. And uh, you have to do the same for like all the other gods and stuff. But honestly, like the storyline is not really the driving point for me. It's the gameplay. I love Breath of the Wild as many people do. And I love being able to climb up on things and, I love using my abilities to unlock different puzzles. It's heavily puzzle driven. And uh, yeah. I'm all about puzzle games. I love games like that where you have to kind of examine your surroundings and try to figure out how you're going to get to unlock this treasure checks chest that's behind a, a blocked wall or something like that. And it's full. It's filled with that. I mean, that's what this game is. And I, I love it. So I'm having a really good time with that. I highly recommend it. The game is, is regularly $30 now, even though it just came out, it didn't do very well. And I think it didn't do very well because first of all, it's a crappy name. Uh, second of all, it's a <laughs> new, I mean, it's a horrible name, isn't it? I can hardly ever remember the name of that game. Uh, um, <laughs> not only that though it's it's a new it's a new title it's a new game in the uh yeah. it, there's nothing to lean on you know and so in a in an industry where you know the sequels and stuff are going to sell more than yeah. a new release this game is fantastic i am i was talking to you earlier or i said mentioned earlier i have a top three final fantasy 7 remake immortals phoenix rising is definitely number two on my list uh behind that um nice i i enjoyed it that much number three i'm kind of getting off now <laughs> getting off on a different subject anyway uh i don't know what number three would be but immortals phoenix <laughs> rising is my number two how about that you didn't play three I games last year that's what it comes down to it's okay it's fine you can admit it it's okay oh demon souls demon souls duh oh, demon yep. souls yeah. i uh, Do you like oh, you no. like immortals phoenix Rising better, better than demon souls no wow. i don't i don't okay. i forgot about i was Demon's gonna Souls. say like damn okay yeah uh i'm gonna go final fantasy 7 remake demon souls then immortals phoenix rising how about that fair enough i bet you there's other games that i played last year that came out last year i just can't remember them yeah i have to Demon's go through Souls my pretty damn great it really is uh, it's got me excited to go back into uh, dark souls 2 but I don't know if I mentioned, yeah, I did on the last podcast. I played the 
I, I was like trying to collect everything I could in Demon Souls before I beat it. Yeah, you did. It also didn't help that I got stuck in a place, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, oh. Immortals Phoenix Rising, 30 bucks. Buy it. I highly recommend it, especially if you like, especially if you like uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. All right. You have no interest, do you? Uh, no, I do. I just, uh, right now, like <laughs> games in general have not been really in the budget. I have not been able to, like, I'm, I'm going to do a, in the coming weeks, I'm going to do another, another pickups video, but it's literally all games that were like gifted to me, like Christmas and that kind of stuff, or stuff that I was yeah. like, you know, this was massively lowered in price to where I was like, okay, well, it's under 10 bucks. I may as well pick it up now because it's going to go back up. Um, right. I, I, it just has not been you know, I, my girlfriend lives out of town and I'm, we're trying to like save for vacations and mm. stuff and having to travel back and forth and money is just yeah. like, it's super tight. I'm thankful I have a job, you know, at this point, we've talked about that plenty of times before in the show, but like, I I'm, it's just not in the cards at the moment. And, you know, if, if I, honestly, I, I would probably pick it up. Um, if I, if I, if I had the money, right now even if it was still you know 60 bucks i still probably would have gotten it um but the fact is right now i look at it and i say like i want it i want to try it out but i know i won't get to it right away i know it'll be a right. while before i play it so i'm just there's just no point in me getting it at this point um i, I, I hear just you man. don't have the funds at this time so well but don't I will skip eventually, it yes I'm, okay no 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 i, I definitely want to check it out because i've heard nothing but amazing things you know so i'm definitely stoked to try it it's definitely the sleeper hit of last year for sure and I've heard it being called that, and it's absolutely true for me. Cool. So, uh, other than that, man, um, I got a new Game Boy Advance Micro, so I've been playing a lot of little games on that. And I got Final Fantasy Advance One and Two, and I've been playing that on on my Micro. Dawn that of Souls. Is, what's that? Oh yeah, Dawn of Souls. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying that game too, and it's it's nice because I've got my Micro sitting on my desk usually. It's not here right now. Usually I have it sitting on my desk. So when I'm working and I need to take a quick Final Fantasy break, I'll just pop it open or <laughs> pop it on and, you know, uh, level up a little bit and turn back off again, go back to work. It's, oh, yeah. it's nice. I like it. Um, that's really it as far as like things that notable things besides Forza, which we'll get into. And actually, yep. let's just get on into that. I'm ready. Xbox Series X. Yeah. You got one. You got I one. Did. What? Yeah. What? Three weeks ago? Uh, no. Well, it was right towards the end of December that I got it. Uh, so about a month ago. Um, yeah. I was trying to get a PS5, a second PS5, which I eventually did get for uh, the same friend I was talking about earlier with with Cyberpunk, um, who who uh, she had been trying to get one, and it became a really like a game where we would just like. I would shoot her messages being like, all right, Walmart's going to have them at 3 PM today. Let's, let's hop on and let's do it. And then, you know, <laughs> we'd start texting each other while we were on dual monitors, freaking clicking like crazy and stuff. And, um, eventually able to get one of those, but the Xbox thing came after I was trying to get a PS5 PS5 went like that. It was gone. And just for the hell of it, I was like, well, they still have Xboxes in stock. Why not? I'll try it. Click through. It got to the final screen. I was like, <gasps> no click. And it went through and I was like, oh, well, <laughs> it's a good next box now so um and i realized the irony in saying that just after i had just complained about uh not having too much money <laughs> at the moment however however in my defense the playstation 5 for myself was paid for by my mom who got it for me as a christmas present and the ps5 for my friend was paid back to me so all i got was one console for me so yeah and I had planned on buying myself one. So I did have money saved for that. So let's just, let's just put that out there because I totally see the irony <laughs> in, in that situation there. Um, sure, sure. Just justify your actions, all right? You know? <laughs> I know, I am. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's, it, uh, it's, it's been a Forza box for the most part so far. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean that in a negative way because it runs beautifully and it's, it's gorgeous. And I honestly am, am having a good time with it. Um, what do we want to start with um well let's just start with actually i want to start with packaging i, I like from the no, moment you open that thing xbox beautiful. wins over playstation on that hands down wow. yeah it's the way they it's had that like, thing packaged is perfect 
it's like opening a like a treasure box like mm -hmm. it, the i wasn't i wasn't super excited about the xbox series x simply because i didn't know what i was going to play on it i was going to play the same games i'd already been playing but i got it home and i was like yeah cool i got one and i opened it up and when you see the way that it's displayed in that box it's just like it's awesome it's exciting. it really is cool yeah, yeah. so they've got it imagine uh, it's like imagine opening a treasure chest that has a key inside, but the key is on a fluffy pillow on the inside yeah. of the treasure chest. <laughs> it's like, oh That's man, exactly they presented right. it so beautifully to me. This is great. Yeah, no, it, it's really, really cool how they how they did it. Whereas PS5 is just like <laughs> into the box. Yeah. So uh, and then all you have to do is take it out of the box, plug it in, set it up on your on your entertainment center or whatever, yeah. and you're done. No need to screw in any kind of weird stand to it or anything like that. Uh, it's just it's it's I like it's a simple little rectangular box yet I love the design of it I think it's so simple and perfect so um Xbox wins definitely in terms of design and packaging Agreed. in my in my opinion yeah um, I mean I, I, yep. I don't think it's like the most amazing design but I think it's perfect in its simplicity like it doesn't do any it doesn't try to do anything like crazy or weird or like have a wavy base and like make it difficult to display it on its side and all this just weird yeah. stuff that the ps5 ended up doing and i was i was really really happy with just how easy it was to just set up and, and be done with it matter of fact i had more issues setting up my ps my with my xbox when it came to my ps5 and what i mean by that is because I, I realized that sounded like gibberish is that when <laughs> i was setting up my ps my xbox uh, series x i bumped the uh the uh shelf that had the ps5 on it and it fell off the base so i had to take the whole damn thing out and unplug it and freaking put the base back on correctly and put it back oh, like it was man. a nightmare and i'm like oh cool awesome and then of course the xbox one when it was ready just whoop done yeah or xbox one X. that's funny xbox series x jesus I xbox mean, series freaking, x. Uh, dumb name dumb geez. name yeah, it's, it's very it's really dumb. dumb name but it, the the ease of use doesn't stop there so the way you set up your Xbox after you plug it in is 100% through your phone. Like all you have to do is log into your account on the app on your phone, tie it to your system. And then you do all the typing of your account information, whatever else you need to signing on to the Wi-Fi. All of that is handled through the app on the phone. And so I don't have to sit there and uh, click around on, 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 uh, on screen, uh, keyboards and stuff with my with my analog stick it's just yep. the ease of use was was so good and it was able to take my account and plug it right into the xbox all my games were already there ready for me to start downloading and playing it was just it was so easy i loved it um yep what else what else what else did you have anything anything of note during the setup phase or process Not really i i mean it, it, it i that's probably a good thing that i don't have much because i really don't remember even doing it it was just i just remember <laughs> was that easy done. i'd be like oh yeah. okay now i can play cool yeah uh yeah there really wasn't much to it so well i also oh on top of that i was able to unplug my hard drive from my xbox one and plug it into the series x all the games read off the right off the bat, and I was able to start playing immediately without having to download them again. Yep. That was incredible, um, and I appreciated that because at the time I didn't want to have to pay for unlimited data through my internet or ISP. So uh, that was kind of nice, even though I ended up having to pay for <laughs> the unlimited data eventually. <laughs> anyway, I'm surprised you already weren't. That's crazy. Oh man, I was avoiding it. I was avoiding it as long as I possibly could. Um, but I mean, it was, it was so nice. And then actually another thing that I think this does so much better than the PS5 is it shows you which games are optimized for the series X in a much more clear way than the PS5 does. Like I've got games like, for instance, I've been buying on black Friday. I bought a bunch of PS4 games that were, uh, that you could download the PS5 version just using the PS4 yeah. disc. So when you do that, though, it automatically puts on the PS4 version on your console and you have to manually go in and tell it to download the PS5 version. 
And it's, it's so confusing mm-hmm. and it doesn't really explain it to you well. And it's hard to even tell if you have, or if you are playing the PS4 version or the PS5 version. Like I, I still, I, I can't tell you, like, I don't know how to do it. I know there's a little symbol that says PS4 up in the top or PS5, but I don't remember what screen that's on or how I to think get it to just it. Defaults, I think it just defaults to the PS5 version when you put the disc back in after it's been downloaded. Does it? Okay, well, I, think so. I had both versions downloaded on my console. So I had the PS4 and the PS5 version and I had to go back through and delete the PS4 versions of the games hmm. um, that I already had. So that was another thing I didn't realize I'd done. So I had dual copies of all the games. So on the Series X though, all I had to do was go on there and it shows you this game has been optimized for the Series X. And then do you want to update it? And you hit the update button. It'll automatically update that version of the game for you on that console so you can play it. And there is no dual copies of anything. And then there's an icon right on the picture of the game to let you know that this is a Series X game and you can play it that way. Love it, man. It is so good. And it'll automatically put those Series X games on the internal hard drive um, if they're on the external, it'll co- move them over to the internal hard drive. So you don't have to worry about all that. Um, <clears throat> Cause it will only play games on the internal hard drive, which makes sense. Same thing with the PS five. You can only play it on the internal hard drive cause it's solid state. So the ease of use in that, in terms of that is, is, is excellent, you know, and, and to be honest with you, like everything I've experienced with the series X thus far, I like far better than the PS five, like far better. It's just they have one. Yes. (laughs) That is the glaring, glaring issue that PlayStation, I mean, Xbox has right now. And it sucks. But yeah, I agree. I I don't think this would be an ongoing issue, though. I really don't. No, 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 definitely not. I, uh, when they, when they said that Halo was getting delayed, I was just kind of like, oh, crap. What now? Um, right. For me and you, I don't think that that was as much of an issue simply because when, you know, and I, I would assume you felt the same way I did when they were like, yeah, it's backwards compatible with every generation we have. I was like, oh, I'm sold. Yeah, I'll, I'll take one in a heartbeat. I don't have to hook right. up all the old consoles and everything. It's perfect. So I was super excited for that. And I have I have actually tested um, a couple of old games on there just to see how they ran and stuff. And it's it's wonderful. Absolutely great. I played Crimson Skies the other day. Uh, which is an, mm. a, an original Xbox game. And I, I love that game so much. Um, yeah. And it ran beautifully. It was, it was just, I had a great time playing it. And I uh, obviously Forza is the one we spent the most time playing. Um, and my God, that game looks. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it does. My mind, it does. Man. It's, it's so gorgeous on there. It's unbelievable. I, I am. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know that I'll ever get tired of that game. The only time I will quote get tired of it is when the next one comes out and I'll just be playing that instead. <laughs> like right. I man, I can always go back to that and have some fun. And we've been doing the Lego expansion and, and having a good time with that. And um I'm glad you told have... me about that. The yeah. Lego expansion. Yeah, we got it on sale, uh like what, the New Year sale or whatever, the holiday yeah. sale. Normally um, it was like twenty bucks. bucks, you got it for like what, eight? Eight bucks, yeah. Like it's that? so yeah. fun. Um, yeah, really but yeah, like it. you were saying, my kids are playing with us. Uh, Libby mm-hmm. is all about that game right now. She's she's been enjoying the heck out of it, racing with us and everything. <laughs> we got funny stories and and trash talking into the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, so so Libby Libby is, is struggles with reading words sometimes. <laughs> um, I I don't know how funny this is gonna be to like people who are just listening, but like rest assured when this happened we could not breathe we were laughing so hard <laughs> it was hilarious <clears throat> so she she was she was asking through the microphone you know because we're i was playing on my pc she was playing on the xbox series x and we were playing with jj online um and she was asking if if we knew what co-op was the rip- first one she said because she said coop coop <laughs> She goes, what's Coop? <laughs> got and so we were like just chuckling <laughs> about that. We're like, we know exactly what she's talking about. Like, I didn't know what she was like, talking about. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, I, that one I knew immediately. The other one, I had no clue what she was talking about. No idea. Yeah, she was just, hey, what's uh, what's what's Coop? And so we, you know, chuckled, explained it to her, and then and then she said, I don't the think one we that explained it to her. About. I yeah, think we, we kept it going. Oh, did we? Oh, we kept I, it going for a while. Assumes, oh well. 
Whoops. Well, then the other one was uh, like they have rival challenges, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. Or so when you when you hit the pause button or when you when you start a race, it'll say like co-op, <laughs> um, solo, <laughs> PvP, and then rivals. And those are the options okay. that it gives you as far as the play modes that you can do. And so she's reading through them, and we, we just hear, "What's Ribbles?" <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, like I had to do a double take. Go, what? <laughs> and like, she swears she says ribbles like with a V, but I swear she said ribbles with a B when she first the first time because that's why I was laughing so hard. I was like, and I even said to you in the in the mic, I was like, that sounds like some like something off the kids menu at a barbecue place, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'll take the ribbles and a coke. Like yeah. we were just dying. We were laughing so hard. And we had to look at the menu to be like, what is she talking about? Oh, rivals. My God. Rivals. It was just so damn funny. Oh my God. Like I said, anybody who's, who's listening to this is probably like, okay, guys, she mispronounced a word. She's a kid. Let it yeah. go. <laughs> but you don't understand how hard we were laughing. Like I, I legit, like my face was just completely red and I could not breathe. Yeah. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> It was, it was the, it was the turn, like you had to be there for the delivery of it yes. and the way that it went coming from her mouth and the way she was, she was just, <laughs> she was so, she was serious about it. But at the same time, I mean, Libby's a trash talker and she was just, oh my, yeah, she was all over us. And uh, whenever, <laughs> whenever she, she said that it was just, it was just so funny. It was so funny. <laughs> I can't even give context to it. It's, it had to be there moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's things like that, man. I love I love that aspect of multiplayer gaming and being able to experience co op gaming with with my kids and my friends. Oh, I think you mean coop. Like that. coop. Thank you, thank you. Coop gaming. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we played quite a bit. We played for what two nights, I think, on that game. In fact, I want to play some more. I love that game. <laughs> I'm never tired of Forza, man. Uh, yeah, seriously. Anybody who's listening too, if you, if you guys play Force at all, we uh we like doing the co-op stuff. So absolutely, anybody who wants to join, you're more than welcome to. Just hit us up on one of our one of our platforms, as it were, and uh, yeah, we'd be happy to invite you sometime to a play sesh. Uh, we can all enjoy coops and ribbles. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, that's another great thing about the Series X is that I did buy the Series X for my kids to play because they are more Xbox gamers. So it was nice that I could play on my PC with them on the Series X. And yep. I did not have to buy the game twice. So because we have Games Pass, that's another thing. I love Games Pass. I've said this before on the podcast. I really love Games Pass. We have a huge library of games that my kids can play because of Games Pass and because of Xbox Live Gold. So we've accumulated so many games from Gold over the years old games, new games, you name it. Um, and then Games Pass keeps us updated. And it usually almost always picks games out that my kids like and are going to want to play, you know? So um, it's a big, big time. It's a really good investment for me. And it gets a lot of use to my house. But where I was going with that is that um, because I have Games Pass on my account and I set my Series X to uh, as my home console, Anybody who's signed into that Xbox can play those games. Then I can sign into my account on my PC and play the PC versions of those games. And you can play together without interference. Cool. That is really cool. um, we, we've been doing that with Gears. Amy will play Gears on the Xbox while I'll play on the PC. I, I think I mentioned that before. On the same account. We don't have to buy two games pass or two copies of the game or anything. No. So it's worth it if you've got... If you got a means or a way of playing on multiple systems, and you have um, you have people to play with you, and you don't want to purchase the game twice, it's possible. So yeah, check that, that out. That being said, uh, you did run into an issue um, the first night oh. that we tried to do it with uh, where where Owen was going to play on the Xbox, um, right. and it kept just booting you out of the game. Um, yeah. Did you figure out why it was doing that? No, that was a weird thing. Honestly, what I think it is is that he was starting the game on on a on a new account who that hadn't played the game yet. So you have to play through the tutorial. Well, when you play through the tutorial, you can't go into the pause menu and create 
you know, or choose what you want to do. You just, you have to play through that opening mission and then it opens up. Yeah. The problem was every time I pushed the three line button, what is that button called on the Xbox? You know, it's like the start uh, button on a computer. It's called a hamburger. The hamburger icon. Yes. That's, that's Very familiar called. with the hamburger icon. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's got a name like options. I think it's the options button. So I know which button you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's where whenever start I should be. Thanks. Xbox, exactly. Really. Exactly. <laughs> So whenever I push that button to go into the uh, menu to try to see if I could get her to join us uh, or him, it, it, it would go, it would kick me off. It would close the game and kick me off to the dashboard. And this did, it did that like four or five times. I tried At it least. over and over again. Yeah. yeah. And I restarted the Xbox and it just wouldn't let me do it. Um, it wasn't until like a, day or two later that I got back on there and then I played through that whole mission, got them past that point and then it stopped doing that. So hmm. I don't know what was causing it. It's, it, it, it seemed more like a bug than uh, an issue with the game, but right. yeah, I found it to be weird. Um, one of the few bugs that I've run into on the series X. So yeah, I really haven't, I mean, like, granted I haven't played it anywhere near as much as my PS five, but I haven't run into too many crazy bugs or issues that i know of either um i just again my, my my the biggest selling point for me is that backwards compatibility that is that alone like they could not have new games for like you know a year or two and i'd still mm -hmm. be perfectly happy with that you know that's totally just me and i want them to get games don't get me wrong right right um, but like i i just being able to have that for lack of a better term one-stop shop where i can literally just hook up that one console and be able to play everything I have Xbox related on it um, is, is awesome. And because that, like, I'm, I'm already thinking like for next year, my, my 20 games that I do every year, I'm already thinking to myself, like, Oh my God, I can make things so easy on myself yeah. playing old Xbox games now. Cause I can, you know, do it on, on this TV. So uh, I'm all, I've already been thinking about like, what do I want to play? What do I want to throw in there and all this stuff. So uh, yeah, I, that is, it's, I wish Sony would have done that. Or, I mean, I've said before, if they came out with like a peripheral or something that, that allowed you to do it, I would pay big money for that kind of thing. Um, right. Backwards compatibility is huge, especially for retro gamers like us. It's, it's like, dude, it, you, mm, mm, I just want, especially, it. especially for PS2 games, man, there hasn't yeah. been a way to play PS2 games since the original launch edition of the PS3, which sucks. And a lot of those are, are um, like, you can't play them anymore anyway because they, they, they fail did on the you. Did the PS3 play PS2 games? I thought, I thought it was only PS1. No, it did. The very first edition of the PS3 could play PS2 games. Oh, wow. uh, the 60 gigabyte fat version uh, yeah. could play it. And actually, it's a, it's a desirable, console, desirable console because of that ability. I would and they so, yeah. They took that feature out in later iterations of it um i think the version that i got was one of the last ones that could do that and it was the when metal gear solid 4 came out they came out with a bundle with that game in the console and that's when i bought it and i could play all my ps2 games on it just fine problem is those old fat consoles uh are prone to overheating and yeah. over time you'll get that yellow light of death or whatever it was and that happened to mine I tried to fix it and was unsuccessful. So that's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's paperweight now. Yeah. But I mean, you can't play PS2 games unless you play them on a PS2. And PS2s do not look good on modern TVs. I've got that nice no, tube don't. TV back there that I can play on, but I would still prefer to play them on a modern console, you know? Yeah. I have, I have an upscaler from uh, Castlemania games that I, that I bought um, that, does help a little bit uh but it's still nowhere near like what i would prefer it be right um, so yeah well i mean ps4 did a decent job and ps3 for that matter they did a decent job of bringing over a lot of ps2 titles but i want to play all of them you know there's a lot yeah. of ps2 games that i have that i that were never re-released well, especially especially being an rpg fan like a lot right. of those a lot of the there's a lot of niche rpgs out there that don't get to see the light of day beyond their initial release 
So exactly. it's, it's, it's frustrating. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's my biggest like kudos to, to uh, Microsoft and Xbox for, for doing that because that was such a brilliant move and it really, really means the world to, to gamers like us. So. Well, I'm glad they take it seriously. You know, they, they understand mm-hmm. that they have a good backlog now and yeah. they've been around for long enough that people, you know, there, there's adults now who, who played Xbox when they were kids and they recognize that fact and recognize that those people would like to go back and play those older games again. Right. And giving us the ability to do so is, is amazing. And I'm glad that they have a team actively working on making sure that those titles run on new consoles. And they're, I don't know if you follow like Major Nelson or, or anything on, on Xbox or Xbox on Twitter. Mm-hmm. But they'll they'll post every now and then they'll post these new titles are now playable on Xbox One or Xbox Series X. So they're constantly going in and trying to bring over old games to the new console. Because it's not just as easy as emulating the game. They have to actually go in and fix bugs or whatever it is that they're doing, make it work on yeah. on different hardware. So yeah, I love that aspect. Uh... The other thing, though, um, and I mentioned this before on the PlayStation 5 episode, is the remote play. Um, I think the remote play is, is superior on the Xbox Series X than it is on the PS5. Both work fine, but I had fewer issues with lag um, on the Series X. Uh, you can still play that with a, con- a controller. You can use a PS5, PS4, or no, PS4 controller or an Xbox One controller to play on your phone or your iPad or whatever. So mm. that's nice. Um, I was playing Destiny 2 on it just to test the latency or the lag issues. And I could play it just like I was playing it on the regular console. So no problems. Yeah, that's all you. I, I have not done any remote play or anything. I really have no interest, to be honest. I think it's cool that it's there. Yeah. Um, but it, it's like, you know, it's the same with my Switch. I barely ever play it in handheld mode. I almost, I would say mm. 99 times out of 100, I have it on my TV. Only time I play it in handheld mode is if I go out of town. And I bring it with me. That's it. Right. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I just or or if uh, like a game like um, oh, what's it called? Um, like Fantasy Star or something, where there's a lot of like it's an old school RPG, so there's a ton of grinding. Being able to have mm-hmm. that in handheld mode while I grind battles, I you know throw on my my TV or something like that. But yeah, beyond that, yeah, I, I play everything on the on the TV. So. What's well, cool, it's there. there. Yeah, it's there for people if you're like me and you have a house full of people and yeah. need to be able to escape somewhere and play your, still play your, your console. Um, but, I mean, actually, I, was, I mentioned the controller just briefly there. I really like the controller. It's a subtle, subtle difference from the Xbox One controller, but I still like how it feels better. Does it feel a little heavier to you? Yeah, it does. It does. It has a little more heft yep. and it's got these ridges or something like little bumps on the back side of it. You call them ribbles? Ribbles. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They're absolutely ribbles. They got um, some ribbles on the side. But they feel they feel nice. Like it, I think it, it it it's a it's like an extra layer of grip, but I think it also like I get sweaty palms when I'm playing games. I don't know if you do or not, but if I'm playing for extended period for of time, time my, yeah. my, my hands will get real, real sweaty and it's annoying and I have to put the controller down and wipe my hands off on my jeans and stuff. I feel like that is less prominent on the series. See, that's where we differ right there. You wear pants when you game. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it, it seems cooler to me. And, you know, it could be to wear pants in my head. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I get what you're saying. I honestly, I really, I haven't noticed too much of a difference between the two. Um, I actually like the additional weight though. So I have been using yeah. the Xbox Series X controller. Um, but I, I honestly, like they could have kept it the exact same, not changed a thing. I'd have been super happy with it. Um, their design for their controller is hands down the best, in my opinion, out of, out of uh, any video game controller that I've used. So well, even the the triggers, the triggers feel real nice too, because they've got that that they've got those ribbles too on the top. (laughs) They feel more, they feel a little bit more contour, I guess, in shape too. I don't know. Yeah. And then the D pad, the 
the D pad feels good too. Surprisingly, I didn't think I would like it, but I actually prefer it. Don't have to use it that much, but I do prefer no. the way it look or feels. But. No, it's it's. I mean, if it, it's really not like a stark difference to the Xbox One controller. So if you've used that before, you have a really good idea of what you're getting into. It's just right. They made some quality of life improvements that are very subtle, but don't hurt at all. So, so I'm more than happy with it. Do you think that they are going to copy PlayStation 5 with their controller features and add those to another iteration of the Series X controller? Like make a new controller that has like all the um, the bells and whistles where you're feeling the haptic stuff? Right. Like maybe keep the same design, but add those features into it. Um, if they haven't already, uh, it's probably not going to be super, like, I imagine it would end up being something like the, uh, like the elite controller where it's super expensive yeah. and not very many people get it, but those that do swear by it and love it. Um, yeah. that's what I could see happening if they do decide to go with something like that, which I'm, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Uh, but I think. I would imagine because of the full backwards compatibility and, and the other things that this can do, if they had added in there, if they had added that stuff in there, the haptic stuff in there, uh, just right off the bat, we would have seen a much more expensive console um, than we got. Yeah. So, Right. Well, I also think, yeah, I think they will go that route and they may do the elite version of it. But the one thing that I think might keep them from doing that is that, they're going to have to have their developers go back and reprogram the games to take advantage of those features. Right. And I don't know how logistically that, I don't know, think they would do be. that. They would just, any new games that came out, they would say, Oh, this is compatible with this. And that's yeah. It. Yeah. Maybe I do like I, some light rumbling to the other ones, but nothing. I don't think it'd be anything crazy. I do think it would be a good idea for them to go ahead and make a controller like that though, because I, I really love the way it works on the PS5. That's a big selling point for me. Yeah. And for games like like Forza, could you imagine like your trigger? You know, it already, the controller vibrates really crazy like anyway when you're playing Forza and it's awesome. Yeah. But could you imagine like the trigger having a little bit of force feedback or you're running over bumps and stuff on the road and you can feel that in your trigger finger while you're hitting the gas. And I don't know, I yeah. think it would be really cool. Yeah, it's definitely something to think about. I think it'd be cool to see. Yeah. Um, who knows? Maybe they're working on something like that for uh, Forza 5 or Forza yeah. Horizon 5, which God, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they do with that. I hope. I mean, I haven't mm-hmm. heard anything about it, but man, I just can't wait to see a new one. It'd be great. Hopefully they do away with all the updates to your character, your drive or whatever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's the that most the, useless that feature the in the game. the downfall of that game is the, the drive crap. There's I'm okay with it. It's fine. But like the options for what you can do with it are just ridiculous and suck. Quite frankly, yeah. you can't even make the guy look how you want him to look like no. poor girl, you know, <laughs> whatever it is you have like pre-made characters and then you can deck out their clothes with the most random bull crap that are like, Oh God, mm. I it's could dumb. I couldn't get any look that I liked. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go as ridiculous as possible. And you've seen my Same. character. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, the game isn't about the human characters. It's about the cars. Like, right. give me more stuff to customize my cars and I'll be happy. Yep, exactly. So, uh, you know, we were talking about there not being any games, but they've got a bunch of development studios working on stuff right now. Um, there have been a bunch of things announced. Nothing I'm particularly excited about but they're new all new ips too so i can't really speak to anything in terms of like yeah. except for the halo you know super when stoked they, for halo and that's about it when they start releasing stuff um it's going to be an exciting time i am yeah. really excited to start seeing the new games that come out and then building an xbox series x library uh of stuff what i'm not sure i'm going to do is whether i'm going to go physical or digital on that stuff um i don't know i just don't know that i'm gonna go physical on those games um i'm not it just seems to be easier to go digital yeah uh less of a hassle and yeah 
And well, going know, physical so. doesn't really matter right now anyway, because you're, you're only getting half the game in most situations when you buy it physical right. anyway. So, I mean, honestly, in terms of going physical, oh, well, I already went digital on the Xbox One. So I'm going all digital on the Series X as well. Uh, the only time I'll buy a physical version of a game is if it's cheaper than buying the digital version. Sure. Yeah. But with the Games Pass, like most of those games are going to be exclusive to the Xbox. Those are the ones that I would buy physical cheaper. But with the Games Pass, they come to the Xbox anyway. So I don't see any reason for me to ever buy a physical game for the Xbox anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't have Games Pass. So, and I... I... <laughs> I'm always just so on the fence about getting it. Like, A, I don't play my Xbox anywhere near enough. And right. because I'm somebody who will buy a new game, but I won't get to it for like a year or two in a lot of cases. And right. Games Pass will have games on there, but then they'll get rid of them after a certain amount of time. So That's it's kind of like, I, don't, I just don't know for me if it's, if it's worth it because of that. That's why I love, you know, PlayStation Plus, where if a game comes out and it's free on PS Plus for that month, all I have to do is literally go in there and hit, you know, the the... Uh, purchase button and boom I've got it for life as long as I'm you know still a member um, right. and I wish it was something more <laughs> like that so that's why I still have not pulled the trigger on on uh, on the uh, games pass if I played more Xbox it's an amazing deal it's great I just don't play enough yeah. to, to warrant it that's just a personal thing I still think like you'd be a fool if you play Xbox you don't have it you'd be a fool not to have it well, the, the thing about Games Pass that I really love, besides my kids being able to use it, is that it allows me to try games that I've been interested yeah. in, but wouldn't not interested enough to actually buy it. So I get to right. test them out on the Games Pass first. And there's been several examples of that, like uh, ones that come off top of my head is like uh, the pirate game, Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Um, yeah. I got to try that. I got to try Grounded. I got to try um, my friend Pedro. I was always curious about that game and I got to try it on Games Pass. Uh, there was a Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. Got to try that. Um, How was that? There's, uh, It was okay. It wasn't my cup of tea. so Forgettable. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't get that far into it, but I played enough of it to be like, yeah, okay, this is this is a little more anime than I am in the mood for right now. Yeah. So We had a whole conversation about that the other day too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> so but it is cool to be able to try those things out and then i can if it's something that i do enjoy i can go ahead and purchase it and right you know, i've already i've already tried it cool. um but yeah that being said like i don't see a reason because it's not your main console i don't really see a reason for you to have it unless you were right. able to get it super cheap or something which yeah. it does go on sale fairly often um, I've got a year of it for like, I don't remember how much I paid, like 60 bucks or something for a year. So they go on sale when they do, you got to hit them up just as soon as you go and stack them, stack your years. That's how I do it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, man. So what, I mean, do you have anything before we talk about recommendations? Do you have anything else to say about the console itself? Um, I think. I think it is a, if you're not concerned about console exclusives for the PS5, <laughs> it is a very viable. You could say it. If you want new games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Like PS5 has some really amazing exclusive titles. They really do. And that's the biggest selling point for the PS5. It really is. Um, but if you are mainly a third party player, um, you know, like sports titles and other, you know, Ubisoft, EA games, you know, any of those, the Xbox is, is every bit as good as PS5 in my, in my opinion, in terms of yes, agreed. gameplay. So yep. yeah, if you can get one and you, you don't want to wait for a PS5, I'd say do it. My opinion. Yeah, if you can get one and you're you're into those games that are you know not console exclusive and you're just looking to play these games, um, yeah, I, I I agree wholeheartedly. Especially if you are an Xbox fan. If you're an Xbox fan, you're already pro probably trying to get one anyways. Right. <laughs> um, I I would also again um, reiterate, if you are a retro gamer like us and you like having like the idea of having that that one stop shop because I know there are plenty of retro gamers who are purists who are like, 
no, I have my old consoles hooked up because I want to play it on the original hardware. I want to do it this way. I think that's awesome. Go for it. You know, have at it. I just don't have the room to have all these consoles hooked up. I would love to. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I would love to be able to just like have like one big TV and then like shelving all below it with all the different consoles, everything just set up and I could just turn on whatever I wanted to and play it all that way. I don't have that luxury. I love the idea of just having one thing set up that I can put any of my games from that console generation into and and playing. So if you're like that, it is a, just a wonderful, wonderful system for that. Um, And it runs everything beautifully. It's fast, easy to set up. um, And I I can't recommend it for that uh, from that point of view uh, enough. Um, That being said, like you said, um, if you're looking for console exclusives and you're looking for, for uh, like halo and that kind of stuff and, and, things that only xbox offers you're going to be waiting a little bit so it might not be worth it to get it at this point which they're still hard to find anyway so it it doesn't really even matter um so i i would say like we have plenty we have so much to play on the past generation still again you know we said that we had the same thing when we talked about the ps5 um quite frankly i thought they would be easier to find at this point but they're still pretty hard apparently um scalpers are just going ballistic for these things um but if you if you uh do get your hands on one if you're if you're you know looking to to get these exclusive games that only xbox has you're gonna be waiting a while so it just it just wait just wait a little bit you know it's not gonna hurt anything you've got plenty to play right now um there's tons on the xbox one there's tons on the ps4 i think it's kind of you know at least for me with both consoles, I can, I can comfortably say there's no need to get both. Uh, or well, either and one also for that matter. the games that you and I have been mostly playing are on the older consoles, right? Yep. Um, the only the console only... exclusives. Yeah. Is Demon Souls, and, Souls. And Demon Souls. Yeah. Demon Souls and the, the robot game that I forget the name of right now. Astrobot. Yeah. Astro's Playroom. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Those are the only two exclusives that I've played. Yep. Both on PS5. Gra- Granted, both of them were amazing, but... <laughs> yes, they are pretty damn amazing. Yeah. <laughs> they, those are the no only question. ones that I've played. Yeah. But, A, uh, the uh, Demon Souls isn't going to be for everybody because not everybody likes those kinds of games. True. Um, Astro's Playroom, I think, is for everybody. And I think, especially if you're a PlayStation fan, my God, you're going to love it. Uh, but right. it's that's not something you buy a console for. Um, and it's short. It's short. Very like, short. Yeah. It is the perfect pack and title, though. I will say that. Um, right. It's it's great. But it, yeah, it's just it. Next gen is here, but next gen games are not. <laughs> so yeah. it's you know we are we are fortunate enough to have been able to procure one of each, and you know we're having a good time with it. Don't get me wrong, um, but I think in both cases you're fine. It's still at this point. This is January 2021. You're still you're fine not having either one still because. We're still waiting for we're still waiting for announcements on games, let alone right. actual games to come out. You know, all we know is that for the most part is like, you know, the thing that sticks out for Xbox is Halo's coming eventually. And like, <laughs> I don't really know much of anything else that's coming out beyond that. I would venture to guess there's a Forza on the horizon. <laughs> I, See what you did there. Like, I actually didn't mean to do that. But I mean, yeah, totally clever. That's how I am. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, I... I there's just it's sad but at the same time like i think it's actually kind of a little bit of a relief because i can i like to be able to tell people like don't freak out that you can't get one of these things because you do not need it at this point there's just right you just right. don't need it so well, I mean, even with upcoming games <laughs> uh resident evil 8 you know just they just announced the release date for that yep. and that's not that's coming to all the consoles too like yeah there's just not a lot of reason to have a new console right now, unless you're like us. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So like we said, though, if you play Forza uh, Horizon 4, we, we always welcome new teammates. Uh, we have fun on there. It's a good time. You can enjoy some coop and some ribbles. And uh, yeah. it, good Lord. And watch, um, watch JJ get first place on every race, even though. I thought I was good at that game. I thought I was really good at that game until I played with JJ. You beat me a few times. A few More times. A few times, I think. Nah. I think I think we I have think... good nights and bad nights. There's been plenty of times where you've beaten me like three or four races in a row that I can remember. Oh, dude. There's been so many times where 
I'm racing and I'm like, I'm right neck and neck with you at the beginning of the race. And then all of a sudden you're gone. And I don't see you again <laughs> for the rest of the race. <laughs> he just gets that far ahead. And then I'm, I'm way ahead of the computer players and then you're way ahead of me. I'm like, how in the world are you doing that? Hold on. First of all, let's also clarify. We do not play on like any of the hard difficulty levels here. We're playing on like the, the second to easiest one. Um, like I think the easiest is like beginner or something. And then there's inexperienced. I'm pretty sure we play on inexperienced. So we're not like badasses at this game. By any means. <laughs> so we just want to be able to beat the races. And so that's why we're there. Um, true true so yes uh i am very good at beating the easy computers so yeah yeah hooray it's fun it's fun so uh yes we need to play dark souls 2 soon because i'm when you're ready man when i had ready. so much fun I'm with playing Demon other souls, games man demon souls is on my top five for 2020 for sure oh it better be it better be <laughs> we had a good time with it that is. i love that game uh i'm excited to get into uh dark souls 2 which well I, I mean, visually, Dark Souls 2 obviously isn't going to look as good as Demon's Souls, but right. I think gameplay-wise, I think it's going to feel a little better because Demon's Souls still retains the, the gameplay style of the original Demon's Souls. So there's going to be some quality of life improvements on, Demon, on Dark Souls 2 that I think you'll appreciate, such as okay. fast travel. And I mean, I guess you don't really need fast travel in Demon's Souls, but... Is it harder fast or is travel. it easier than... Uh the original dark souls that we played in your opinion um i would say that it's harder oh, God i think, it, I think it, it's harder dark souls was so hard uh, i mean but at this point in time you've played through two of two souls games i yeah, think but you'll that be able was to the reason it. i like demon souls so much is because i had an easy time with it like there i really did not struggle like hardcore very much on that game at all dark souls though man i had moments where i was like I never want to touch this thing again. Never. At all. <laughs> and of course, when I finished it, like a week later, I was like, my Dark Souls. <laughs> so, man, I don't know. I'm excited though. I am. I got to show you my Dark Souls shrine up here on the wall that I made. It's so cool. Nice. Um, yeah, we need to we need to get into that as soon as you're ready, man. Sounds good to me. Uh, it'll probably be in the next few weeks. I'll be ready to do it. I got, I got stuff going on, and then. Uh, I think Valentine's Day. I'm headed to uh, that weekend. I'm heading to Georgia to see Amanda. Um, That's why you're weekend. broke all the time. Those plane tickets can't be cheap, man. <laughs> no, they're not. Uh, well, they, I mean, they're not bank breaking, but they're not like super cheap. It's depending on the time of the year. Um, it's a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm a big dude. So I always spring for like the extra, like, you know, 35 to 50 bucks to, um be able to sit in like one of the better seats um with more leg room how long of a flight is that uh so it's it's usually two there's not not very often do they have straight shots um it's probably all together like maybe three to four hours something like that so oh that's not bad bad. that's not bad at all nope cool so yeah phone show well that's all I got to say on Xbox. What about Me you? Too. Yeah. Yep. Get one when it's worth it. Yeah. And that's yeah. up to you when it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's it really is just completely situational. Um, you know, as it is with with most entertainment things, um, I we are enjoying it. But I think I speak for both of us when I say like, if we didn't have one at this point we wouldn't be like, Oh my God, I can't, I don't have an Xbox. It sucks. I need one. So like, we'd be fine. We'd be totally yeah. fine without it. Um, so yeah. Uh, it is a vast improvement over the Xbox one, not the Xbox one X, but the Xbox one, which for you and I both, that's what we came from. And it's pretty damn cool. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And actually, uh, I know we mentioned, you know, playing together on, uh, on, on Forza. Um, I will put um, my screen name in the comments down below on the video. Um, And uh, if you want to add us on uh, Switch as well, me at least, I don't want to speak for him, but uh, if you want to add me on Switch um, to play Monster Hunter when that comes out too, 
I would love to have more people to play that with because we we had a fun time playing Monster Hunter World when we we played together and stuff. And I think we both just kind of fell off because it was like it was pretty much just you and I. And then uh, who was it? Your brother who would join us every now and then. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Billy, I think, played with us a few times. Yeah, that's right. Um, but I mean, it's, those are it, those are games that if you have a full party, it's way better. But with yeah. two people, it's 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 fun. But at the same time, like you can't really. It's just better with four people to have a full group going out there and doing these things. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, definitely would wouldn't mind having some more players when that comes out as well. So, um, absolutely. Next episode, we are going to be talking achievements and trophies, and we are working on getting a special guest to be on, um, and that'll be a lot of fun. So I'm super excited to have that. I am very excited about that. Uh, I'm not super into getting trophies and achievements anymore, but man, when achievements were first introduced on the Xbox, I was I was so into it. Like your gamer score is like 125,000. Dude, I told I I got so bad about it. Like I was renting games at that time. You could still rent games from Blockbuster, so I was renting games for the simple purpose, the sole purpose of getting achievement score from them. So I would rent the easy ones to get achievement score, and I would look up online which ones to give me achievement score. Now I did that for a lot of games, but there are a lot of games that I just played legitimately, and, you know, completed. My buddy Brandon was the same way. He was all about Xbox, and once he hit that hundred thousand though, because that's what he wanted. He hit that hundred thousand. He just stopped. Like he still right here, dude. fires it up every now and then, but he just stopped after that. I think. Like, eh. I think that happens to a lot of people. I hit that hundred k, and I was like, "I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore." And then, you know, that's just why. Like, I devoted all that time to Xbox. I'm not really doing it on the PlayStation. You know, it's just like those days are behind yeah. me now. But it's still like I would love to go back and you know reminisce about those days and talk about you know what drives us today with getting achievements and trophies and things like that because they are still relevant i am yeah i'm very very excited to talk about it because i i go back and forth on on the reasons i go for them and and like i the person that we're going to try and have on um who i've already talked to and and he's agreed we just have to make sure we get the scheduling right and everything like that so i, I think it's going to happen um is actually a big reason why i still do because i will watch his videos and he'll do stuff where he's like all right here's like five games where you can get you know trophies in like 10 minutes and stuff and, <laughs> I, and i'm just like oh that sounds really easy okay cool let me just buy these games really quick and then i you know i've got like almost 40 platinums because i just did that um so yeah it's fun anyways uh we'll talk about that next next month on there i'm super excited it's gonna be fun um, something to look forward to i think it'll be a good episode for sure yeah, i agree for sure uh, finally a good episode um, i know <laughs> um other than that though i mean you got anything to plug anything going on well i did want to show off my new setup um so i've got my camera set up it's a new camera i've got my microphone set up on my desk i've got a new standing desk as well because um i can't sit down all day i sit down all day at work um and you know, dude, I'm, I'm all kinds of ready for doing some, some videos in the future. It just depends on how much time I have to, to get into it and devote to it, you know? Um, but I want to try to get some stuff out there. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, it won't be regular, you know, I, you impress the hell out of me that you're able to get a video out once a week. I, I, there's no way I could do that, but I would like to just get some stuff out there when I can. As, as, as I explained earlier, sometimes the weeks don't go so great and you're like yeah. struggling and you spend all weekend. Cause I normally, I have like three or four videos backed up in case something like that happens, but I've been promising this stupid review to come out. And I told myself <laughs> like, no, I'm getting this damn thing done today. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, that's one thing I told myself when I first started, I was like, I am going to make it a point to keep a schedule and stick to that schedule. I may not release them at the same time every week, but I will try to release at least once a week on Sundays. Um, yeah. so, and I've, I've, and you've held to that years I've stuck. Yeah. That, yeah. So it's pretty cool. So I will update as I figure out what I'm going to do. Um, uh, but, and I say that cool. like every episode, don't I? 
but you know that's just how my life goes <laughs> i'm still waiting on that video that uh, episode you did with uh, you and amy that podcast episode uh, i was just talking to her about that i was just talking to her about that today yep we're still working on that <laughs> <laughs> it's okay um yeah well with that uh you can find uh us at i mean if you're listening to this you've already found it in one form or another but if you're watching the video you can find the audio portion uh pixel perspective under any pretty much any audio platform that releases podcasts i think uh adrian has them going up there um and if you're listening to the audio portion that you found that and you would like to see more uh content with myself and sometimes adrian um on uh youtube uh, you can check out Game Room Revival, which is my channel. Like I said, I just recently did a review of Cyberpunk 2077, as well as by the time this gets aired, um, I will also have my top five games of 2020 uh, released um, and out too. So uh, yeah, cool. That's all I got. You got anything else? And yeah, I'll have our Twitter links and all that stuff there as well. So. Yeah. Nope, that's good. I think that's a wrap. Word. All right. Um, you want to take us out? You know, you do such a good job at it. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you take us out? I'm not good at goodbyes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, with that, this is the Pixel Perspective Podcast signing off. That's the Triple P Podcast for those of you. That's who right. Didn't catch not that. PP. There's three. There's, There's three. Yeah. Pixel Perspective Podcast. Thank you again for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. You know the drill. And as always, Adrian, what should they do? Keep on gaming. That's right.